All right, this is the final result for today. And uh, this is sometimes called the rank nullity theorem. And um, here's how it goes. So if we have a linear transformation from V to W, V and W being finite dimensional vector spaces over F, then we can prove that the dimension of V is the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the range. Now, one way we could prove that would be just to use the coordinate mapping stuff and to steal the result from the thing I've told you guys about column vectors and, I mean, about pivots and non-pivots. But I'm going to show you a different ar argument right now, which is more linear algebraic in nature. And I say linear algebraic because it involves the consideration of bases and extension of bases and just working with those directly, okay? So, starting point. The kernel is a subspace of V. That means we can select a basis for it, say V1 through Vs. And by definition, T of V1 through T of Vs is zero. All right, then you take that basis, extend it to a basis beta for V. So here we're going to add in the vectors Vs plus one, da da da, Vs plus k, all right? Of course, S plus k has to be equal to the dimension of V, which I'm thinking of calling N eventually. All right, so, great. If Y is in the image, right, if Y is in T of V, that means that there exists an X and V such that T of X is equal to Y. But we can do more. We can expand that X in terms of the beta basis, right? And so T of X is this. But then we can use additivity and homogeneity to pull out the constants. And you notice what happens is that a lot of this dies off, like pretty much this whole first part's in the kernel. So it maps to zero, and you're just left with the images of the last piece. So this calculation already shows that the image is in the span of T of Vs plus 1 through T of Vn. So this suggests to me that the, the image of the last part of the beta basis, all right, the part that's not in the kernel, that that actually forms a basis for the image. All right, and that's what we're about to prove. So we, we've got that it's a span. Uh, we have that the images S plus 1 through S plus K span the image. But now we need to check linear independence. So I consider CV1, C1, T of Vs plus S plus 1 plus C2, T of Vs plus 2, da, 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 plus CK, T of Vs plus K. My goal, of course, is to show that all these constants are zero. If we can show that, we've shown linear independence, and hence this um, set is, in fact, a basis for the, um, the, the, the range. So again, using linearity, I combine this linear combination to an image of the linear combination. Let's call it star. And then the thing is, if star was if star was non-zero, that would be trouble because then that would mean that um, that that would mean that this was in the kernel and it wasn't zero. If that's in the kernel and not zero, that means that there's a linear dependence between the last part of the basis for beta and the first part of the basis for beta, which would make beta linearly in the, linearly dependent. That would be very troubling. So in other words, this star must be zero since star is an element of the span of beta, is not an element, not an element of the span of beta naught, all right? Then it follows that these constants must all be zero by the linear independence of beta, and so we find that this is a linearly independent set, and that means it's a basis for the image, and the number of things in that set is k, and that's equal to n minus s by construction, and there you have it, n is equal to the dimension of k plus s, which is the dimension of the image plus the dimension of the kernel. And that, folks, is the, the rank nullity theorem. So anyway, I just thought I should show you that argument. Um, I have put this on tests before, and, um, you know, if I give students fair warning, they usually get it. So anyway, that's it for today. Enjoy the snow. Thanks, guys.